This podcast is brought to you by the Ginger Camel Network. Visit us at www.gingercamelnetwork.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching, whatever time you're listening, welcome to Your Onion Podcast Show. Today we have a very special guest, and I'm not going to say her name because it's not that easy. <laughs> My name is Hermin, Hermin Hrubler. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I can tell, are you from South Africa? Yes, I am. Yes, I was. Okay, so Hermin, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, no, great to have you on. So this show is going to be a slightly different. <clears throat> Um, because would you like to give us an introduction of what you actually do? Yeah, sure. I'm an energy therapist. Um, with I use quite a few modalities, various modalities, in, in two services that I offer. Um, so I, I work with energy, and I work with frequency and vibration and sound, and I also work with essential oils. And a little bit of clairvoyance, Oh, That's really? Well, yes. Oh, just throw that one in. <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, yeah, because I think that it's very important because um, these days a lot of people, if they have anything, uh, if they have any issues, they generally go to the pharmacist and uh, want the quick fix and yeah. never really look at the whole body. The holistic side of it. Yeah, the absolutely. Whole yeah, it's very easy um, to go into a chemist and... Get a pull, mm. you know, for whatever reason, over the counter. But those over the counter pulls have long term uh, ramifications yeah. on on various cells in your body, and it doesn't matter how many pulls you use or how many chemicals you you put in your body. Um, if your energy is not bringing um, oxygen on a cellular level, nothing is going to work for you. No. So what we're trying to do is is get enough oxygen into each each cell so that you live on the Prana, which is the earth, the earth energy, and the earth oxygen. Great. All right. Well, let's go back. Okay. Let's find out how you got into this. How I got into this? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, how far back do you want? Well, me to go? <laughs> when did you? Okay. So, when when did you have that light bulb moment of like, okay, did you have a normal job, and then it was just like, no. All right. There's, there's a new direction um, for me. I've always been interested in alternative healing because I come from a family of alternative healers. Um, my grandmother was a very strong herbalist and she raised me um, to believe in my in my intuition and my earth connection. But as um, a lot of us, I, I, I got a job and I worked in high corporate. Oh, really? Yes, I was in high corporate finance for many years. Wow. <laughs> and then I moved to Doha um, in 2009, 2009. I moved to Doha. And I, why? Why did you move to Doha? My husband got a long-term contract here. Okay. And um, he wasn't my husband at the time. I married him when we got here. Okay. But um, th that was a decision for me to change my life. And, so and go into that was your direction. decision in regards to, I want to, I know I want to change, but he's got the contract, so I'll follow him. Give up my corporate. Oh no, I didn't know I wanted to give up my corporate side. Yeah, you didn't want to. No, I was, I was, I was, oh. I was strong, powerful, seven day a week worker, eighteen hours a day, um, killing myself <laughs> in the process. So when I arrived here, I thought I would just step completely into back into that high corporate milieu. Yeah, which of course didn't happen. Um, the universe sometimes have other plans for us. Absolutely. And I was trying to figure out what could I do, and um, my my hobby at that time was essential oil therapy. Um, which I'd been, you know, using as a hobby on my two hours off a day. I would look at it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine actually said to me, well, why don't you do um, uh, aromatherapy massage in Doha? They could use you. And I was like, oh, okay, let me try that. And she actually gave me two little bottles of essential oils because those years you couldn't buy essential oils in Doha. No. You couldn't. It was it was not on the, on the list of... Um, Can you buy them now? Um, yeah, not good quality, but you can. Okay. There are places where you can. Yeah, I remember um, coming in 2006 looking for essential oils and I couldn't find it. Yes, no. they were not available. So she gave me to my startup of two bottles. Um, were they that kind of size? Yes, they were 10 <laughs> mil. <laughs> 10 mil. And if I remember correctly, it was uh, eucalyptus and lavender. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I went back to South Africa, came back with a whole bunch of, of, of 
acceptable oils to me at that time. And that's where it grew. I started doing home service um, with a with a 50 kilogram load that I would get to the client's house and carry a massage bed and a suitcase with towels and music and oils. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I would and everybody wanted their um, treatments upstairs, right? So I oh. would have to lug that whole bunch upstairs. It, yeah. um, and through the years, I just realized that this is my this is my passion. And I am a healer and I must stop hiding from it. And that's so how did you know you were a healer? Um, because it worked. It worked. Yes. Um, you could feel it. No, well, I didn't feel it. My okay, clients your felt clients it. Your clients felt it. Um, I would, I would, I mean, the people just kept coming to me because uh, it really worked. That was the essential oils. Um, the cranial sacral therapy, the Reiki, the reflexology, all of that um, was studies that I did while I was working as an aromatherapist. Um, and then so that was self-study? It was self-study. Yeah. Um, some of the courses that I ran with people, some one-on-one -on -one with mentors, um, you know, but it just came to me like it, it was almost like a, a familiar memory that I had. Yeah. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so it came easy to me and various ways of, of getting my knowledge. But yeah, and trial and error, a lot of trial and error um, on my husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I bet he's not complaining. <laughs> no, I remember when I did my reflexology, um, he wears a size 13 shoe. So wow, he's really got big, big feet. Shoe. Yeah. Absolutely. So he would lie on his back, and I would take a, a permanent marker like a sharpie, <laughs> and I would draw out the the sections of the reflexology under his feet for my exams and that yeah. kind of thing. So a lot of trial and error, and then I discovered um, that being said, all the energy therapy, my passion, and apparently my gift, and then um, then I discovered Tibetan singing bowls. Okay, it, how did that come about? Um, Oh, I was I was on a on a finding my, my my sole mission on a holiday by myself and I kept on driving past the Tibetan tea house and thinking I should go in. I should go in. I never went in. And then the one Saturday I said, I'm going in. And they were busy with a Tibetan singing bowls um, meditation session. So I joined in, couldn't rim the bowl, didn't even know how to hold the thing, but I, I was I was my interest was peaked and mm. I was like, this is amazing. And then I wanted to buy a bowl, but my budget was very small, so I didn't buy a bowl. And well, then, they were quite expensive. Yes, they, because they sell by weight. Ah. Um, um, they're made from seven different metals, some of which is, is silver and gold. So it, it actually, it's, it's quite he oh, weighty. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I didn't, I, and it sort of left my brain, but it was in the back of my mind. And then one day I was sitting on Facebook, and across my Facebook um, timeline came Tibetan Singing Bowls, Dora Dessler, Doris Dessler, she's she's presenting a course in Doha, and I was like, I've got to do that. I've got to do that. And uh, at that time, I had a small little bowl, tiny little thing that I bought in Amsterdam. Yeah. And um, I was very proud of my bowl, and I took it in with me, and I put it down. I had no idea how this works. And she came out with se with a set of seven beautiful, huge bowls, and I just took my little bowl and put it in my handbag. <laughs> never spoke about it yeah. again. And um, I did my course with her. And then I did my second course with her, and I'm a master practitioner now. And uh, this is an ancient, ancient healing therapy that works with frequency, vibration, and sound. Um, so what it does is it, it works directly on the energy centers of your body. It creates a co cocoon around it, and healing happens. So we uh, do you know what a chakra is? Yes. All right, so we have seven. We have 12, actually, but we only work on, on seven. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it actually, um, the vibration is like a pebble that you throw into a lake. And it makes the room out, um, you know, when it makes what do you call it, the, the room out. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And that can act, that vibration can actually um, go straight into your bone marrow. So what we're doing is we're shaking up all the all the cells yeah. through the vibrate through the vibration of the bowls, wow. and that brings oxygen to the cells. Um, the sound works on your amygdala gland, which is in your head. Mm -hmm. um, and your ears, obviously. So that works on your brain waves as well. I'm getting a lot bit technical. I yeah, know. Go. I know. I'm Carry on. Technical. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then the frequency um, has a different. Every bowl has a different frequency, and each frequency works on on a different chakra. So that is how we, we build a cocoon around you. We we we, we fill your body with oxygen, um, and basically we realign, and we reset, and we relax. Yeah. So whether you come to me in my treatment room as an essential oil, holistic massage, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, or you or we do a, a, a bowl session on you, that is that is my motto. 
realign, reset, and relax. Wow. Yeah. So what kind of people, what kind of uh, ailments have, you know, people come to you and, you know, you've, you've seen a, you know, a tr transformation? Shall we talk about the massage therapy first? Okay. Because they're let's, different. No, they're you're right. Different. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with the um, massage therapy let's start, first. Let's start with the massage therapy. And, and I, I, it's difficult for me to call it a massage therapy because it's so much more than no. that. But what, do you want to go for into? For these purposes, we'll call it okay. a, a massage yeah. therapy. Um, I have seen people with um, severe menopausal um, symptoms lose the symptoms. But obviously over a period of time, um, you know, if, if, if a symptom is built up in you over three years, I can't fix it oh, in yeah, one session. Oh, yeah, it's not a quick fix. Yes, it's not a quick no. fix. It's not a quick fix. We have to start first a, di a diagnostic. So menopausal. I've seen um, people with cancer not get cured, but I have alleviated the symptoms. Okay, the nausea after chemotherapy, oh, okay. the nausea, yeah. that kind of thing. Of course, your muscle, your, your muscle problems, that gets sorted out um, by the light I use when I do the massage therapy automatically. Reflexology um, creates organ, organ relaxation, mm. if I want to call it that. So, and I can also see what is wrong with you. So I have pointed out problems in people's bodies to them that they didn't realize they had then I would say, go to the doctor, please, and go and speak to him about yeah. this. And then, uh, you know, it was it was correct. On an emotional level, um, I've had uh, ladies change their whole lives um, because of what happened in the treatment room for the better. So that gives me a very big responsibility of what I say to, to clients mm. and how I treat them. Um, I've even had a, a client uh, go through a very messy divorce, not because of what happened in the room, <laughs> but, uh, no. no, but that can happen as well. Yes, that can happen. Yeah. But she came to me because the divorce was already happening and she was feeling extremely flat on the floor and um, broken. Mm. So through through about, we did about six weeks of therapy with her. And um, at the end, she walked away and she she's, she's blossoming back in her home country. Um, what showed me that my words to these clients mean a lot is she actually put a tattoo on the side of her body yeah which said i am enough because of the divorce she didn't think she was enough anymore so on an emotional mm. level um i think it helps quite a bit mm. um i've seen people with anxiety um and depression come out of that yeah but that is a bit obviously that's more intense but yes anxiety and depression um basically moving the toxins out of your body to create a better uh, base to work from every day. Mm. Did I answer your question? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. And do you see, you know, you come from a corporate, the corporate world. Yes. Do you get a lot from that? Not as much as I would like. No? No, not as much as I would like. I think, um, I think people forget about self-care, mm. you know, and um, it's, it's always, I'll put that on the back burner because it's, it's for myself. I have a story. Can I tell a story about my theory Absolutely. on what I do and what I remind people of, especially corporate clients? You have a, you have, you are a cup with jewels on the outside, a pewter drinking glass like they had in the 16th century with jewels on the outside. Mm -hmm. And inside is your life energy. Okay. And that life energy is also the glue that keeps the stones on the outside of the glass. At the bottom of the glass, there's a crack and this energy runs out there. And sometimes people will come and will put their mouths to that crack and suck you dry. And I'm sure all of us have experienced that person leaves you and you're like, oh, thank gosh, that pe person oh, is gone. Yeah. I feel so drained. And then other people come and, and you squeeze. And just a normal day-to-day -day living, you are losing that energy all the time. And if you don't put that energy back in, eventually the stones start falling off. Mm. And if the last fo um, stone fall off, um, I, I like to call it, that's when you have your emotional breakdown. Or, or your 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 anxiety episode because there's nothing you are, you are empty yeah. and you can't pour from an from an empty cup. No. So it's so self care. I I really wish I could get people to understand this. Self care is not selfish. Self care is actually looking after your people, because the more you have for yourself, the more you have to give out. Yeah. And that's so important. Yeah. I see ladies come to me, um, four children, um, a full time job. Um, no no housekeeper and they are just completely empty mm. and they've got nothing they're snapping at their children they're snapping at their husband they, they're forgetting things at work etc etc that to me is a, is a clear indication 
that you have been pouring from an empty cup for yeah. too long. So, so self-care should be at the top of your list of things to do. You should first put in your self-care appointment in your, di- in your diary and then build your schedule around that, mm. not the other way around. No. Yeah. Very good. Um, so you came to the Middle East in 2009. Yes. So have you seen um, a transformation, you know, more interest in alternative, alternative healing? Have I seen an increase in interest? Among the expat community, I would say yes. Okay. Um, I think uh, we've, we've had some icons um, in, in that regard, like Nicole Van Hattem. She, yeah. she was, she, you know who that is, right? Huh? Nicole Van Hattem. Oh, absolutely. You know. I knew she was, Nicole. She was, I mean, I mean she's, she's, she one, was, she's, she's one yeah. of my icons. Uh, um, and she, when she came in and, and she brought self-care and alternative holistic approach into Doha, and sadly, I think when she left, that that dropped a bit because she was the person who would be on magazine covers. And she was. She she was on your podcast. Too. She w- she had her own podcast. Yeah, we lo- we helped to exactly. launch her own podcast. There we go. Yes. So you know she she brought holistic and alternative healthcare into Doha, and because of her wonderful energy and her drive, that picked up. But I think since she's left, it's it's actually gone down. We don't have a, an icon right now to actually. Tell people, hey, look what, look no, you're, what right. you're missing. You know. Don't you want to take that? Uh, yes. We'll do it. Okay, let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, a big we, shout out to Nicole. She was great. Yes, she was. Yes. She was full of energy and she was really, you know, standing on the um, yes, soapbox and, and really shouting lifting, out. Absolutely. Lifting people, lifting people. And she was trying people. to get uh, organizations moving Involved. in that. And absolutely. she did. Yes. Yeah. What a dynamic woman. Oh, for sure. She helped me. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. When I started out, I did a, a six-month course with her. Um, so I would do a massage therapy on her, and she would do a, a, a life coach session on me. Yeah. And that brought me from a very deep, dark hole. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's through that um, with, with Nicole. Look at me. I'm going emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but it's through Nicole that I realized I don't have to be corporate to matter. No. Yeah, because a lot of women, um, when they come to Doha, the expats, they, they leave behind a corporate environment and they arrive here. And for the first three months, it's like, I don't know what to do with myself. I feel useless. That's the people. Come and see me. Those are the people yeah. that, we can, that we can help through that very difficult time. I was the husband uh, that left my corporate world and followed my wife. Oh, yes. Okay. So I found it very difficult. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm talking about, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. It's quite difficult to, to do that major shift mm. because now all of a sudden you find yourself a house husband or a housewife yeah. and it's not what you want to do when you have a very keen and intelligent brain. And what you do, you get up to nonsense and you fight with your partner when they get home because you've got nothing else to do with your life. You can only go to so many women's groups and you can only have so many coffees. And yeah, and everyone sees you as, oh, you're the wife of, or you're the, you're the husband of. Exactly. And it's just like, no, I have an identity. Exactly. But it's really, yeah, it's yeah. very strange. Yeah, it's, it's living in the shadow of your partner when you were a superstar yourself mm. that actually um, can really break you down. Yeah. And that's where alternative healing comes in. Because you can't take a pull for that. No. You cannot take a pull for that. Um, I've got a psychology background as well. So that I incorporate as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I have people come to me that cut themselves, for instance, um, that hurt themselves, that cut themselves. We've stopped that. Yeah, that's meant to be on the increase, I heard. that. So Self-harming. much so. Now, yeah. there, there I've definitely seen an increase. And, it, yeah. it, you know, they kind of relate that to social media. Yes. Yes, because you are isolated. You are yeah. talking, but you are isolated. Yeah. And we are, not, we, are, we, we are not supposed to be isolated. We are pack animals. So we, we should be with our tribe, mm. but your tribe is all of a sudden online um, and there's nobody that can see you. You don't feel, because online you see it and you're like, oh, okay, and you just passed. You yeah, know? Yeah. But when you're interacting face to face with other human beings and you are once again in their energy bubble, that's where we, we draw mm. our, 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 our food, our soul food from, yeah. not online. You can't get fed by, by online media. No. Um, you need to go out and eat in the energy. No, it's so true. Absolutely. You can't yeah. yeah, isolate yourself at home. It's You've got to get out there. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So moving forward, where do you see, see yourself going with all this? All right. I'm going to have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have um, a holistic, he- holistic healing center. 
Um, Here and there. I haven't seen where, <laughs> but I know that but it's you know coming. It's coming. I know it's coming, and I know what it looks like, and I know what it smells like, and I know how many therapy rooms there will be, and I know, I know the the therapies I will be presenting. Um, I know it. It's a knowing, um, and it's coming. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be my retirement position, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I have a few friends, healers across the world who have done the same. And I'm learning from them. And I'm seeing what they're doing. And I'm, I've manifested like crazy on every new moon. <laughs> but it's because it's coming. Yeah. You know? So that's where I'm going. I want to incorporate all the modalities that I have, as well as bring other people in. Um, with relevant, you know, with the holistic approach, the yeah. alternative approach, to come and heal and work, workshops, um, you know, training sessions, that kind of stuff at the center yeah. where it will be. Um, at the moment, it looks like it will most probably be somewhere in the mountains in South Africa. Uh, we are looking at a piece of land at the moment. Nice. But we'll wait for to see if a road can be actually built to get there because it's, oh. yeah, it's right in the mountains. Wow. So I'm hoping to be a global healer bring people to south africa yeah. in the mountains and how do you, how do you get the message out there you know that you're here is it generally down to referrals it's down to referrals yeah. word, of, word of mouth and then i also have a facebook page two facebook pages actually um but the one that's that i'm that i'm building right now since i got back to doha is um pss energy healing um and it's psych sound and smell mm -hmm. psychology sound healing and aroma which is smell um, and people can go and check on there and then also i have an old site that i used to have a long time ago that i've started up again because people are asking me when are you coming back on the site and it's called holistic healer or oh. traveling or traveling traveling aromatherapist sorry <laughs> traveling aromatherapist yeah which is the other page but that's a group you know so i'm not i don't have a website yet um, it's coming though. Yeah, you know. but you you haven't needed it up to I now. I haven't needed it. No, up so. to now. no, I haven't. No. Um, and yeah, I hope to to become a, to to show people I'm an authority in this industry, mm. if you want to put it. If that you way. call it, an if industry, you want, yeah. yes, it's an industry. Um, it's seen as a as a cottage industry in a lot of countries, mm. um, but it, a cottage industry would not have survived this long. If it didn't actually have benefits no. and worked, you know, yeah. people can only really know how it works until you experience it for yourself. No, for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, if I can make a teenager, not I, I can't make it. Um, I've ob obviously a conduit for energy that, that that goes through me into the client. If that energy and the oils and the frequency and vibration and sound can can make a teenager understand that cutting yourself is not um, in any way uh, you know what's the word I'm looking for profitable or, or efficient or, yeah. or anyway doing any good then it must say something right if, if I can bring a pregnant teenager away from the brink of suicide um, to a place where she, where she sees the future in a different way then it must be working yeah, right that's powerful. Um, it's, it's very powerful yeah. but there's also um, charlatans out there and that's why I think this uh, our, our industry also has a stigma attached to it. Um, I saw the other way, the other day online, that uh, there was somebody saying, "We will teach you how to be a psychic for nineteen dollars." Yeah. Yeah, you but I think all that. industries have that yeah. element. Yeah. Even the medical uh, side of things, where yeah. people pretend to be doctors and they don't, and they don't have any qualifications behind yes. them. Yes. So, but yeah, you're right. It's that whole. You, you do have the charlatans that yes you do yeah and that that's the people that that give our industry a bad name yeah you know um so yeah i don't know how to get through to people that this is actually and you see in south africa places like south africa netherlands croatia even um it's it's accepted mm. as a form of healing um but in doha we are still when nicole was here it was considered but now it's not anymore mm. You know, it's very quiet. It's on the low down. We can't talk about well, it. Well, I think much. you need to step up onto that soapbox. Yes, I will. Yes. Yes. Good. I was hoping you'd ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you a question. Now I've just lost it. Um, no, it's totally gone. All right. So, um, 
<laughs> so my hours are, are, are a little bit weird. Oh, that's it. No, yeah. I was going to ask, uh, basically say, so it's only for women. Um, if it's in a group, if it's a group meditation with the Tibetan singing bowls. Okay, that is, then it's then it, men Then it's and women. fine, men okay. and women co- okay. combined, it's not a problem. Um, unfortunately, because of the modesty laws yes. in the country, um, I will look at a gentleman if his wife is in the room with us. Okay. Otherwise, I will not. Right. Um, in South Africa or yeah. anywhere else, no problem. That is fine. But because of the mod- modesty laws here, I'm, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to go there. No. It's quite dangerous. No, absolutely. But the healing can happen for the men through the Tibetan singing bowls in groups. I recently did a, a beach meditation with the Tibetan singing bowls for uh, 365 Adventures. Oh, yeah. Where we were on the beach mm-hmm. in, in Sea Lion. And we had 14 people, and um, there were three people whose lives were touched that day. We had speakers and, and microphones. Nice. And, it, and Okay, there was a storm over the sea. Oh, really? It started raining eventually. Um, but people didn't get up when it started raining. They were all in alpha state, yeah. which is where I want you because that's where I can work on your energy. Great. And the men, th- there was one, one gentleman particularly that came to me afterwards, and he said, thank you. I have been struggling with... a." an issue in my life, a decision I have to make, and I've made it now. And he, he contacted me two weeks later, and he actually did exactly what he said. He left, nice. and he started some his own thing in America. He's on yeah. his way there. So we shake, we're shaking up energy. Excellent. So how do people contact you? People can contact me on my telephone on WhatsApp yeah. or on my Facebook pages. Okay, so they can find the telephone number on your Facebook yes, pages. Yes, at my Facebook pages, um, Facebook Messenger, um, I can leave my telephone number here with you guys if they want a phone. Yeah. You know, and find. Um, yeah, we can put it all in the show notes. Yes, that'll be great. Superb. Yeah. Well, we've run out of time. Oh, so quickly. I know. There's so much more to say. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that in another podcast. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Hamir. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. And keep us up to date. I will. Yeah. 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 I will. Great. Stefan, thank you so much for inviting me. No, it's been um, my pleasure. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. This podcast has been brought to you by the Ginger Camel Network. Visit us at www.gingercamelnetwork.com.